Hi there, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Jackie, and in today's video, I am quilting. I'm going to show you how to make a quilted wall hanging, like the one that you see behind me here. It's a seascape, and it's using a lot of quilting techniques, but also embellishing with some sea glass and some sea treasures. And I'm going to show you a bit of a variation on this piece behind me, because I never like to make the same thing twice. So I'm going to demo a seascape with a lighthouse instead of with a church, as in what's in this piece right here. Now, I've done a, p a video like this in the past. I did a video a while ago where I showed you how to make this quilted design. This is a landscape with a building on it, and it was a fairly popular video, so I thought maybe I should do another one in case you'd like to see a bit of a variation on a theme. A few of the similar techniques, but it's different because now I'm doing seascape, and I'm going to show you a few different quilting techniques in this one. So I hope you join me for this video. So the finished version of this quilt measures 14 inches by 18 inches, and the techniques that I'm going to show you is how to create a quilt sandwich, and then on top of that sandwich, I have raw edge strip piecing, so strips that are all done in raw edge. I have quilting, and I'm using free motion quilting, but you can also use quilting with a walking foot or straight lines if you wish. I'm showing you how to do some raw edge apples like with the church and with the pieces of land here. Some couching, these pieces of seagrass are all couched on. Some embroidery, I've used quite a bit of embroidery and added layers of strips of fabric on top of my quilt. A lot of beading, I love beading. I've added some different fibers and a lot of uh, a lot of dyed fabric. You can use dyed fabric, commercial fabric. I've done a bit of glitter glue here and a bit of paint. So there's quite a bit going on. And this is the type of art piece where anything goes. You can put whatever you want on a quilt like this and it's gonna work. You can see after I finished the piece, I added a bunch of sea glass to make the path up to the church. I added some shells and rocks and some more sea glass here and it just all comes together. A little bit of blue sea glass in the sky for a bird. So there's quite a bit. Anything you can do, a lot of layers, a lot of texture, anything goes in a multimedia piece like this. So my inspiration for this particular scene is Cape Blomidon in Nova Scotia. Here's a picture of Cape Blomidon. It's a very famous scene in Nova Scotia. It's just beautiful, and I quite love it. And I've used that theme in a number of my art pieces before. Now, in this particular photo, you can't see the church, but uh, a friend of mine gave me a card here not too long ago where you were looking at Cape Blomidon from an angle where you could see the church. You see it right there? So I thought I really wanted to depict that church in an art piece because it's a beautiful area. So for you, it's really important for you to say, okay, what's my inspiration? Maybe you want to get a picture of a seascape that holds a lot of meaning for you, and you want to try and depict that seascape in your art piece. I've also used this same scene to create a sea glass piece. This is one of my favorite sea glass pieces. This is again Cape Blomidon with the water in front, and this is Gaspro River running through and some of the land masses that are there. So I really hope that you find a good inspiration for your version of a quilted seascape that's going to be embellished with some sea treasures. So the format for this video is that I'm going to show you how to complete your art piece in 12 steps. And in each step, what you can do, it's kind of presented like a workshop, so you can watch what I say in step one and then pause the video, go off and do that, and then come back, watch the next step, so on and so on, till you get to the end of the video. Or you can watch the video all the way through, and by the end of it, you might say, Jackie, you are crazy. There's no way I'm doing that. But if you want to go back and do it, you can. But what you can do as well, I've prepared a pattern and instructions, and I'm going to put a downloadable version of that on my website, JackieTrimperSeaGlass.com. So you can go there and download the pattern and instructions and follow along with me 
if you would like. And on that pattern and instructions, I'm going to show you the pattern to do the piece that you see behind me, which is Cape Blomidon with uh, church. Grand Pre Church, and I'm also going to do, the one I'm going to demo with you today is Cape Blomidon with a lighthouse, and I'm actually incorporating, my inspiration for this lighthouse is Peggy's Cove Lighthouse, because I love Peggy's Cove Lighthouse. It's so beautiful. So even though it's in a different part of the province, this is an art piece. In an art piece, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to depict it exactly. And then I'm also going to show you a version with a little red barn, which you can do your own type of building that you want. Um, but I'll give you all the information that you need to adapt the pattern in a way that's going to work for you, for what you want to depict. So let's get started. And I will go through the 12 steps and you can either follow along or you can stop and come back to it as you wish. So step number one is to gather up all your materials. So you're going to need your pattern. This is the pattern for the piece that I've already completed. And here's the version with the little red barn. But the one that I'm going to do with you today is the one with the lighthouse. Now I want my lighthouse a little bit bigger than that. So what I've done is I've blown it up and printed off a version that's a little bit bigger. So this is what I'm going to use for this piece. And um, it's easy to do that with the pattern that I put on my website because the patterns are all in JPEG format so you can fiddle around with them however you like. Now what else you're going to need? You need a backing. So this finished piece is going to be about 14 inches by 18 inches. So I cut a piece of fabric that I want to use for the back. I'm going to set that aside because I'm not going to use that initially because this is my nice backing. So I usually cut a nice backing to cover all the messy bits in the end. And then I cut an ugly backing that in the end you're not going to see this. This is also same size. And then you need a piece of batting. And the batting, again, cut it about for an 18 by um, 14 inch piece, cut it a couple inches bigger. So these pieces are cut a little bit bigger. The other thing that you're going to need is some fusible web. My, there, you can get quite a few fusible web products, but my favorite is Wonder Under. And it's this stuff that when you activate it with the iron on one side, it becomes sticky. So you're going to need a pretty good piece of that. I've cut a piece that is the same Oh, a little bit smaller than my batting. This is the same size as my finished quilt. And you're going to need a little bit extra for the raw edge applique as well. And you can use Heat and Bond, you can use Steam -a Seam, Misty Fuse. There's quite a few different products you can use. So pick the one that you like. Now the fun part, the fabric. So what I have done is I have prepared quite a few strips of fabric. Now in picking your fabric, you can prepare, I've got way more here than what I'm gonna need, but do as many or as few as you like. If you wanna do one strip for the sky, one for the water, one for the foreground, that's fine. I like doing lots and lots of strips. And for raw edge strip piecing, I find the more you have, the more interesting it is. Now the way I do these, some of these are commercial fabrics, like, um, or different fibers, like this one's kind of satiny. That one you have to cut on your, with a scissors or your cutting board. But for any that you can rip, I really like to rip them. So I'll show you what I do with that. I just take a piece of fabric like this, like I want to put a bit of that blue in there. So I'll take the fabric and I'll just cut a tiny bit. Like most of my strips are one to two inches long. Rip that, and then what happens when you rip the fabric, it gets all kind of frayed on the end, and that helps add some texture to your pieces. So that's how I prepared a lot of these. And sometimes you can just take that piece of fabric and put it directly into your piece, 
or you might need to iron them if they get really crinkly. Sometimes I'll press them before I start to assemble my piece. So the, you need that for fabric. And you also need a little bit of fabric for your binding. So I cut two strips of fabric that are two and a half inches wide. Um, that the length of the fabric or width of the fabric rather so there which is about 40 inches and that's going to be my binding so that's what you need for fabric and then I need a little bit of fabric for my raw edge applique so I've got a couple of different shades of brown very small pieces for my capes I've got some white for my lighthouse I have some red for the top of my lighthouse and I have some yellow for my light in the lighthouse and that's all I need for fabric. Now, I also have a tray of stuff here that I know I'm going to use. I like to assemble all my stuff before I start. So I need some thread for quilting. I've picked out some light blue for the sky, some blue-green for the water, and some green for the foreground, some brown for the cape. I've also picked out some nice thick white thread that I'm going to use to create some, I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. That's fun to create some little bubbles in the water. And I've got some embroidery floss to do some embroidery. I've got some shades of green and some shades of blue and some off-white for the sky. I've got some yarn here because I want to couch on some yarn to make some nice long seagrass. I have a bit of paint because I'm thinking I might do a little bit of painting just to embellish and add a bit of detail. I'll probably go dig out some glitter glue before I finish because I love to have a little bit of glitter in the water. Glitter glue is amazing. And I've got some beads. I have some green beads and some blue beads. I have some seed beads and some bugle beads. I like to use a real variety of stuff. And I also have a tray of sea glass and sea treasures. So I know I want to put a bunch of rocks at the base of my lighthouse. So I've got a bunch of little rocks. I have some sea glass. I've got blue and green and brown. I have a piece of driftwood. I have a great big rock here. I've got some shells, so I can play around with all of that stuff. I think I've got enough there to finish it off and um, it will look, just add some more detail. Anything you want to put in a piece like this is going to work. In terms of other materials, you're going to need your sewing machine, your cutting board, scissors, all your typical sewing stuff. And then I also have some quick seal kitchen or adhesive caulk that I'm going to use for gluing on some of my sea treasures. This stuff dries clear, works great on fabric. And keep in mind that you wouldn't use this if it was a typical fabric piece that's going to go in the wash. But this is a piece of art. It's going to hang on the wall. It doesn't need to be washed. And this is a product 505 Temporary Fabric Adhesive. If you don't have it, don't bother going out to buy it. You don't need it. You can pin instead. But I sometimes use this to hold everything in place until I've had a chance to sew. So that's step one. So you can pause the video and go off and gather all your materials and then come back for step two. So step three is to create your quilt sandwich. So what I do here is I take my ugly backing. Keep in mind you can use anything for this because this is a piece of fabric that in the finished piece you're not going to see. So take that over to your ironing board or in my case I have an ironing pad that I bring over to my table just because I find it easier to work with. And this is where you can take your 505 spray. You don't need to use this. You can just do a few pins around the edges if you want but I I'm going to use this because I have it and you just spray a tiny little bit of this on doesn't need much it kind of acts like a bit of a glue and then I'm going to take my piece of batting and I'm going to lay that on top and just hand press it in place and that's going to hold that in place so that the batting stays on the backing and helps just to help secure everything in place. And then on top of that, I'm going to take my piece 
of fusible webbing. This is the finished size of my piece, which is 14 inches by 18 inches, because I need this. Now be very careful. You'll notice if you separate this that there's kind of like a filmy side and there's a paper side. Make sure that you put the paper side up. If you don't, what happens when you put heat on this, it turns into, that filmy stuff turns into glue. So I have done this before, believe me, it is not fun to clean your iron off if you make a mistake and put it on the wrong side. So put the iron so the filmy side down, put your iron on the paper. I like to start in the middle and then I'm just going to put this into place like this. Now this is giving me my quilt sandwich. Well, the top layer of the sandwich is all the fabric and the stuff on top. But this is the base for my quilt sandwich. And I call this my canvas. The canvas on which I create my art piece. So that needs enough heat to activate all the glue so that that glue is going to stay in place. And then it will be ready to go. Now before you try to rip that paper off, let it sit for about five minutes because if you try to rip it off right away, the, the glue is going to come off with the paper. So if you let it set, the paper should just peel right off. So there we go, that's set for a few minutes and now that paper peels right off. I tend to peel it off gently so that I don't remove any of the sticky stuff. Now, once you get this to this stage, be careful, do not touch it with your iron until you have all your strips in place because as soon as that gets touched with the iron, that stuff is going to act like glue and it will stick immediately. So I have my canvas ready to go. So step three is to prepare your pattern because I like to do that ahead of time. So what you want to do is take your pattern and trace it onto the paper side of your Wonder Under. So for this one, um, for a lot of what you're going to do, it won't matter how the orientation is, but keep in mind that you're going to want to draw the mirror image. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing on, not on the paper side, but you want the paper side up. So this is for my white. So each color of fabric that you want to do, you want to trace on a different piece. This is where I often write on it white. So this wants to go onto, or I want it, to go onto my white fabric. So I'm just going to draw that on the back side of the Wonder Under, all the parts that I want white. Now I'm not going to take, I'm not going to cut out for the windows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the windows on top of that later. So I know that part is white and I know I want this little piece up here to be white. So I've got two white pieces that I want to cut out from my uh, white fabric. So then I'm going to place that onto my white piece of fabric that way so that I know I get the mirror image. And then I'll take that to the ironing board and I'll press that on. Now with my brown bits, the part that I want brown is right here. So I'm just going to go like this. This whole piece here is going to be brown. So I'll put that like that and then that will get cut out and be brown. And then, and I want that dark brown. So I'm going to put that, the back side of your fabric, not the front side, because the front side you want to be showing up. And then I'm going to do my red one. This is really good to have done ahead of time. 
The top of Peggy's Cove Lighthouse has a red piece here, so I really like that in red. And again, I don't have to put the window in there because the window is just going to go on top of it later. I'll show you how I do that later. So that's going to go onto my red bit of fabric. And my yellow is going to be... Got the right bed on that. Got to keep yourself organized, or I do, or I get totally distracted. And then I go... There's my light in my lighthouse. There's one window. Two windows. Three windows. And that's... on my yellow. Now I'm going to take that to the ironing board and press them. So there you go. I have my white lighthouse ready to cut out. I've got the top red piece. I have the yellow light and the windows and I have the brown piece for the top of the lighthouse. Now what I decided to do, I also want to use raw edge applique for my cape and the land structure, but I decided I'm going to freehand cut that. You could also trace from a pattern and get the exact line that you want for your land structures if you want, but I decided for this one I'm going to freehand cut it. Sometimes I do follow the pattern exactly. Now with this I would take this and set it aside. I would recommend don't cut out your little pieces right now because you don't want to lose any. But if it's set aside when it's time to glue that onto the top, it will all be ready to go. All right, now I'm back to my canvas. I have all of my strips of fabric here. Now I'm not going to just lay those on willy-nilly. I'm going to put them on one at a time. I'm going to start at the top. This is very important. Start at the top and work your way to the bottom. And the other thing that you need to keep in mind is that when you're laying these strips on, be sure that the bottom part of each strip touches the canvas here because that, it needs glue to hold it in place while you're quilting. Just needs a little bit of glue. It's not all going to stay in place because the top part of it is going to be loose. So I'm just going to play around with my strips of fabric. You can do this as quickly or as slowly as you like. If you decide that a strip of fabric is too thick, just cut it. If it's too thin, you can go get another strip. Some of these, as you can see, are quite thin. Some of them don't go the whole width. So that's where I might just take my scissors. You get lots of threads and all that. To me, that's all lots of fun. So if you get a strip that doesn't go all the way across, I usually just take another little strip and snip. You want this hanging over the edge a little bit. So I'm just going to play around with these strips of fabric until it looks pretty good. Now you don't want to fuss too, too much over this because in the end this is a piece where there's going to be many, many layers of stuff on top. So if there's a spot that isn't 100% perfect, don't worry, it'll get covered up by the subsequent layers of stuff that you put on here. Now when you're doing this, I kind of like to do a third sky, a third water, a third foreground. You don't have to do that. You could do more sky, you could do more water, you could do whatever you want because it's your art piece and whatever you put in it is going to be beautiful. The one thing I would recommend is to get a horizon line. I always like to have one really small dark strip that denotes the horizon line 
and I try to keep that one fairly straight. The rest doesn't matter in the least, but to have a horizon line that kind of stands out. Now that you would see that's not sticking on the top here, so I have to go and do some snipping here. Maybe put this under here and then there and then there. And then see when I do the next layer, I have this little strip, little dark strip on the horizon line that sort of helps show you where the water ends and the sky starts. So I'm just going to play around with this for a bit till I get all the strips arranged the way I like. So I would encourage you not to fuss too, too much at this stage. Sometimes I can get a bit carried away and spend a lot of time fussing with my strips, but the reality is you're going to be doing many layers on top of this, so it's okay if it's not 100% perfect. So try not to spend too, too much time, especially if it, this is the first time you've ever done this, because if it doesn't work out, you're using mostly scrap material and you can always turf it and try again if you're not happy in the end. So I think I'm going to leave those strips where they are. You'll notice that quite a few of my strips are hanging off the end because that's the way I wanted them lined up. And that's okay, before I start sewing, I'm just gonna trim those. And I have some spots like this where I've got all this extra thread. I love that adds texture, so I'm going to try and leave some of that there and not fuss too, too much. So now I need to take my iron and I'm going to press this. Now my advice on this, start in the middle and at the bottom. So press from the bottom and work your way up. Don't be too, too aggressive with it because you don't want to push the strips out of place and I tend to press as opposed to iron, especially on the first go over. You're trying to activate that glue in the fusible web and as the heat from the iron is going to turn that glue into glue because right now it's just kind of like a bit of a substance there and the heat will glue any bit of the fabric that's touching on the batting, it will stick. So I'm gonna give that a really, really good press. Now, once my strips are all pressed into place, I'm just going to reinforce with a few little pins. You don't need a lot of pinning here. I just like to hold the edges. So in a few of the edges, I'm just going to pin a little bit. Not along the top because that's okay. There. Just a few spots along the sides I find is helpful just to make sure that things don't go totally awry when you go over to the sewing machine. Because now I have to transfer this from my ironing board over to the sewing machine to quilt. And keep in mind too that this piece that I'm creating here is larger than what my finished piece will be. So I will be able to trim off the edges. I'm not going to sew right to the edges either because a lot of that's going to get trimmed. There we go. I'm going to take my scissors, snip off just a, just a bit of the bulk just so it doesn't get in the way as I'm sewing. So you can pause the video at this stage and maybe catch up to where I am. All right, so I've come over to my sewing machine. I brought my piece. Now because the bottom part of each little strip is attached to my batting, it's going to stay in place fairly well while I quilt. So like if I go like this, it's loose at the top, but not at the bottom. So I have my free motion 
foot on my machine, I'm using a dark green variegated thread for the grassy part of my seascape. And I'm going to start and just do free motion lines all the way along my quilt. So I find this layer really adds a lot of texture. And that's what I'm going for. We're in nature here and nature has a lot of texture. Now when you're sewing, what I aim to do is to sew all these strips in place without sewing the top part of each strip. I want that loose because to me that adds texture. So that's just the way I do it. You can do it however you like. And don't worry about messing up a section because you can cover it with another layer of texture. So I finished quilting my grassy area and you see how those lines of thread just add another layer and it helps blend all the strips of fabric together. But I decided to go with more of a blue thread so I'm going to put that in the machine to do my water. And then I'll go with an even lighter blue for the sky. Now with my water I really want to get flowy lines. I want it to look a lot like the water out like a seascape where you have a lot of um, wavy lines and you know lots going on with the water. So this is where the free motion quilting is really nice when you're doing a seascape. However again if you're more comfortable with going with your straight lines using a walking foot or just using your regular foot just go for it. Don't worry about being too fussy with this because in the end it's all going to blend together to create a beautiful seascape effect. And you have to enjoy the process while you're doing it. and forth reminds me so much of the waves and the lines in the water when I'm looking out over the water at the beach. So after you finish your quilting, take your quilt over to your ironing board and give it a really good press. That just helps to sink all those stitches into your quilt sandwich nice and secure. Now before I go any further, I want to trim this to 18 inches by 14 inches because before I put on any of the applique or anything on my next layers, I want to make sure I have my finished size already determined. You don't have to worry about, about cutting along the edge. Remember that you're going to have a um, binding on it. So that'll cover up any stitches and whatnot that are in the ends. So now for the next step, I have my sandwich all finished and now I'm going to do some raw edge applique. So because I already prepared my pattern pieces, I can just grab those and start cutting them out. Now I can cut them out and get them lined up on my quilt sandwich and I want to make sure I get everything lined up before I put the iron on it. So I'll just get it all prepared here and laid out and then I'll fiddle with it till everything is exactly where I want it to be. And then as soon as I put the iron on it, it will stick. So be sure to take the paper off the back. Now I know I want my lighthouse somewhere over here. 
Now I've got everything cut out, but I'm going to fuss with it a bit before I attach anything. So I cut everything out, I took the paper backing off, but I'm not going to put it in place until I've got, I'm not putting the heat to it till I'm sure everything's in place where it should be. The other thing is I realized I had forgotten to draw the little roof for the little side part of my lighthouse, so I had to do that. Now what happens here is I've got a, quite a few layers on top of one, one thing on top of the other. So I don't want to iron something on top until I've got the piece underneath it in place. So what I'm going to do here first, I'll move my entire lighthouse and I want to put this piece of land that's coming up in the water behind the lighthouse and I want to put, attach this piece of land. Now when you have a cape off on the horizon, you want to keep in mind that it's lined up with your horizon. Better move that off there before I iron it in place. Um, so put that where it's going to line up and then I've got the horizon line coming here. So I look off in the distance and that's where that cape is. And this one I want down closer to where my shore area starts. So I'm going to press those two in place before I put anything else on. This is when it gets exciting. Once you put the heat on that, don't try and move it because it's going to be a gooey mess. Trust me, I've done this and I've regretted it because this Wonder Under stuff works really well. So that's in place. Now for my lighthouse, I want to put the lighthouse down first and then I'll attach the other pieces on. Now I don't want a crooked lighthouse. So I'm going to take my ruler and make sure it's lined up with the bottom. I did a pretty good job of eyeballing that. Crooked Lighthouse is not going to look good. We have rulers for a reason. I have to make use of them. So now I can arrange the rest of my lighthouse pieces got the top of the lighthouse and I've got the little house up here that houses the light from the lighthouse. So I'm going to attach those on and my little side roof. This is like the little building beside the lighthouse. And I can put those on before I put the tiny bits on. Sometimes when I'm doing some of this raw edge applique, I'll lay out an entire piece before I put the iron to it. But when I've got layers like this, I like to do the under layers first and then put the other pieces on top. So then I have my window that houses the light. And I have my three windows. If you've ever climbed up a lighthouse, it's really neat as you climb up to look out the windows as you're going. The other thing that having windows like this in a lighthouse does is it gives you a bit of perspective as to how tall that lighthouse is. So this is Peggy's Cove Lighthouse, which is fairly tall. So three windows means three stories. So it's three stories high. And that's all there is to the raw edge applique. Now the other thing is if you want to add some other details, like maybe you want to put a few fence posts in or a little bench or maybe there's something special to you that you'd like to add, you can use the raw edge applique technique as well to add whatever details you want. Now I'm back at my sewing machine and my next step is to do some free motion quilting on top of the parts that I've appliqued because it adds another layer of detail plus it helps to hold all of those little applique pieces in place. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is quilt the lighthouse here because the lighthouse is white. I want to quilt it in white and I'm going to quilt lines that make, make it look like there's shingles going back and forth on the lighthouse. Now I know that I'm planning to put some sea glass on top of all those yellow bits so I'm going to just quilt right over that and the yellow will still shine through. I'm not going to sew those separate. So I just pull my thread through and if you would prefer to use your straight edge for doing this, your walking foot or your straight foot, you could. I just really like free motion quilting, so I like to do this with free motion. I'm just going to go back and forth and make shingles on my lighthouse. So I've done all the quilting on all of my raw edge applique. I quilted the cape fairly densely with brown thread and also this jut of land out here. And I quilted all of my lighthouse. So that's steps one through seven and I am far from done. But I've run out of time on my videotape so I'm going to have to finish this piece in a second video. So be sure to join me for my next video and I'm going to do steps eight through twelve and I'll show you what I do to add tons and tons of embellishments on my lighthouse and my seascape and I hope that you have found this really helpful and you feel inspired to give a piece like this a go. As you can see I have yet to get to the sea treasures but I will. Join me next time. And if you'd like a little more inspiration stick around for a minute and I'll show you a slideshow of other art pieces that I have done of Cape Blomidon. I really hope you enjoy this and it helps inspire you. So until next time, I hope you make it out to the beach and happy sea glass hunting.